is right, hey. guys. That, that is how you start Dupe by the River. Welcome on in, everyone. This is Dupe by the River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia, brought to you by Philly Sports Network. Guys, so we don't have El Parcero Philly's MacBook today, so we're winging it today, but we are going to get through it. We got a jam-packed episode, cover a lot of Philadelphia Union stuff today, so don't you dare go anywhere. Let me introduce you guys, my beautiful co-host today. Let's start off with my man, Justin Chief Balding Officer Freiberg. Justin, what's going on today, my man? How you feeling? You know, it's uh, I'm I'm ready to get a uh, to get a bit a a nice review of a uh, what was a a wild DC game, and it wasn't mostly off the field. Uh, <laughs> and I'm interested to, to get to, to go uh, to to take a little trip down south to uh, to uh, everyone's everyone's most interesting state. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm. I'm ready to go. I'm right with you. I got the same mentality to get right into this podcast. We're down in Florida, two teams. We're not sure how we feel about it right now, right? But I'm excited to get to it. Uh, of course, we are also joined by my man, Tim Lovingooth with the Absolute Drip. And Tim, what I have to ask, how are you yeah. feeling after this morning, my man? Oof. Uh, I mean, if you're going to lose, I guess, you you know, if you're the women's team, you lose to Sweden. So that's, that's usually what happens uh, every, what, 40 to 50 games now that's when they lose so hey now they'll go on a run and they'll uh they'll win gold it's fine everything's good you can't always just win guys for all the u.s women's team fans you guys can't always have this easy road you gotta go through some obstacles and you know this is this is one loss was it 44 matches was that what it is yeah yeah, yeah hey, lost hey. 44 Enjoy the loss, right? <laughs> it's 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 actually going to build the team up. That's that's my. Point. If they don't get built up from that, I don't know. Uh, they they're not going to do anything here. So we'll see. And hey, there you go, Heather, with the uh, with the great comment there. She's <laughs> jealous of that kit. We all are. I, I, for me, I don't know how I feel about that kit, even though it's beautiful. Yeah, uh, you, know. you know, memory pops up in my mind. Man. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's like, yeah, it's a replica for anyone who's wondering. So I didn't spend all that money. It's fake, but it looks we're, good. We're we're on Dupe by the River budget, not MLS overtime budget, guys. Guys, remember that. Remember that. <laughs> and of course, last but not least, speaking of drip, we got my man Zachary Lobasso. Zach, I love the kit. How you doing, man? It's good seeing you. I'm, I'm doing well, man. How are you? How are you? I'm doing great, man. So, guys, Zach has been getting in the video game. How's that been going so far? Uh, I mean, a little hiccup this morning. Uh, I recorded it and it saved as a document instead of uh, MP4, so I got to re-record it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, keep your eyes out for it because there's uh, going to be some guys on the list of forwards the unions to sign that are very interesting. Uh, so yeah, should be good. Hey man, that that's the game. That is the game of the video production game, right? Like you're gonna have your bumps and bruises, of course. You know, today we're we're winging it with the podcast here on 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 the the laptop and of course the phone. So that is the nature of the business. But guys, we we got a lot to get to today. Uh, before we move forward, guys, do not forget to like the live and of course subscribe to the Parcero Phillies YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be putting on some uh, content at the end of the week there. Uh, not just Philadelphia Union stuff, but some other stuff as well. Of course, all the video portions, the live portions go on there. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to Do By The River, wherever you stream podcasts from Apple, Google, and Spotify. Of course, we are also part of PSN Radio. We are also part of the Philly Sports Network broadcasting group there. Of course, guys, to start off today, we actually had some transfer rumors with our Philadelphia Union. Apparently, coming out of Brazil, Ernst Tanner got busy, and he and he threw a little bit of a bid to legendary club, big club, prestigious club, Palmeiras down in Brazil, a $2.5 million bid for one Gabriel Silva, a 19-year-old striker forward uh, who's got a lot of potential first year with the first team uh, for Palmeiras. It's it's obviously got a lot of uni fans going. Obviously, a lot of the uni fan base love those Brazilian players and want to see them here. When you see a two point five million dollar bid, you're thinking this guy's gonna come here and put up some freaking stats. Uh, but guys, I, really for me, what it's about is not just this kid that pot- could potentially come here and be big, but once upon a time, this Ernst Tanner got a Roberto Firmino from Brazil as well. 
And for a lot of Union fans, they're hoping that he can hit goal again with another Brazilian striker. I'm going to start it off here with my man, Zach. Zach, what do you make of this rumor? Um, so after, uh, looking into the kid and all that stuff, I'm not too disappointed that they turned down the transfer request, uh, because ultimately what I'm looking for in a forward that the union are going to sign is someone who has and knows how to score a lot of goals. And through my research, it doesn't seem as though, uh, Gabriel Silva has scored many goals in his career. Um, and as a forward, that's not really what you want. Like from what I can tell over three years, he scored, uh, two, two goals and has one assist, Um, but that, so that could just be club. I don't know how he does for the national team and if they have youth numbers and stuff, but, um, first team stuff, he hasn't scored many goals. I think he's played like 30 some odd games, uh, for the clubs he's been at. Um, and he hasn't scored a lot. And uh, like I said, what I want from a forward is someone who has scored, who knows how to score a lot of goals in big moments. Um, and, and, he, and is, well, uh, maybe, is Greek. <laughs> maybe is Greek. We don't know. <laughs> who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, the union buying young guys, but for 2.5 million, I, I would rather have a guy who's proven at, at the craft of putting the ball in the back of the net. I, I you, make, you make, do bring up some good points. It's a little bit of an unknown there, but, you know, if something we've learned under this Ernst regime here, I mean, this guy has – he's got more hits than misses in the transfer market, but definitely something to keep an eye out there, Zach. Tim, do anything you wanted to add there uh, as far as this rumor? Yeah, I mean, I think Zach kind of hit it on the head. It, it's, it's not like if this was a signing that the union were going to complete that – this player would come in and warrant starting time right away. Uh, it seems like Ernst and Jim, because uh, Jim even talked about it in his uh, press conference this week, he trusts uh, the squad that he has, and anyone else that comes in is an added bonus right now. So if they were going after a younger striker, um, you know, it would most likely be for depth reasons. Right now, we're seeing you know Sergio Santos and Casper Shabilko being the two strikers, uh, while Corey Burke is out with Jamaica, you know, in the quarterfinals of the Gold Cup now, uh, going up against the USA here. So that'll be. You know, <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, there's not many strikers on the union's roster right now. So I think that's sort of what they were looking into, uh, with the green card situation getting figured out with Casper Spilko and, uh, Kai Wagner, they could go and look at, you know, a promising younger international player, uh, which I guess is sort of the route they're, they're looking for right now, uh, as we've seen the, uh, the other transfer rumors come in too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to that point, Tim, you really, that end right there, that's a really good point. Justin, do you think this team does need to make a move for a striker like that? I mean, we do have Corey, like like Tim mentioned. Uh, we do have Sergio, who, I mean, we'll talk about a little bit. My man's a little bit on fire. And then Casper is, you know, you, you've been you've been ringing on his bell a little bit. He's a leading goal scorer in Cockap Champions. Does, does this team need to make this type of move? Um, I, I'd be, I'd be at, I think, lying if I said no. And I think it's mainly because of depth. I mean, you look at it, really, you only really have three strikers. You have a ton of young players who can fill in and guys that can fill into that spot. But, I mean, this was a start in the right direction. Now, according to the the, the article on Brotherly Game, they did update it to say that the union actually were the ones that ended negotiations, that it looks like Palmeiras was ready to to accept the $2.5 million offer. Um, and, And doing a little digging into the player, I think he... I'm curious if some of those stats were were maybe from the youth ranks because it looks like he joined the senior team fairly recently. Um, So I am curious if if he really was like maybe he got time in various games and maybe that's why the stats are a little fuzzy on him. Um, But the fact that they're willing, the fact that a two and a half million dollar offer was even considered, you got to think, I mean, in the last couple of years, think about the the the, the signings that have been done. Jamiro Montero, close to two million. Daniel Gazdog, around what was that one point eight two million dollars? I mean, right there, that's over you know almost three point seven million in, in two signings alone. You're starting to see the union push Ernst push the envelope. Now, are these signings people have heard of? Not usually, but again, given Ernst's track record, I, I like it and. 
Yeah, out of the positions that the union need most, midfield is, is not needed. Midfield is absolutely one of the positions you have locked down. I mean, it, it, Jim has said it himself. You have such a massive log jam. It's 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 honestly a, a blessing to have that many players vying for that many spots. Now and, you know. Now you could say, okay, maybe do you need a a, a back? A, you know, a, a fourth center back. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a possibility. Do you need an outside back? Do you trust Matt Real to be that outside back? I haven't seen enough the season. It feels like Jim trusts him more as an attacker than necessarily a defender. Um, I am curious. I mean, on the right side, you have Olivier and Alvis, so I'm not too concerned about the right side. Uh, so really, striker is one position. If you're going to add a player, striker's his position. And while I, you know, like I said, I lo- I love Casper. Casper is has been right now. You're one of your more consistent scorers. Sergio is good in spurts. I, I think that's one of his his biggest issues. Corey has shown that he can be a starter, and I think warrants a discussion. That's where the conversation ends. And I think having four forwards is if you're playing in that kind of a four four two system, you need too deep at both strikers because you need two different play styles. And it's clear that like when you have, when you have Corey and Casper, you're playing this, you, they're, they're basically identical strikers. Mm. And you know, now Casper, you know, Corey's a little faster than Casper, but not nearly as fast as Sergio and Sergio's your burner, but Sergio can't play usually a full 90 minutes. And that's, and that's the consideration. I think Jim and while he, yes, I agree with him that, the roster that they have is very good, and I think if Gazdog can get you know clicking, and I think this midfield can really get going, this will be a dangerous team. You really do need another clinical striker, and I think you can get that in around the two million dollar range, which is right now it's clear that the union are going for that, and I think it shows that Ernst. I mean, out you know think about it; they've been starting to recruit more in South America, which for the union has really not been an area they focused on. And you look at this league and you look at the players that have come through, through South America that have really made, you know, major impacts. Just look at Miguel Almarone is one of the prime examples of taking a player that might not be well known, give him a couple years and boom, you're flipping them. Now, maybe not to Newcastle for that kind of money, but it, it definitely is showing that South American players are looking at the MLS and going, I, I want to go to Europe. And I think the best way is through this league, because you know sometimes when players go directly, it doesn't always work out. And I think giving them a stepping stone, giving them that idea to say, okay, I see that the, 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 tr- the path is there. I can do this is exactly what the union need. That's the, the union or that type of team and say, Hey, you come here. Look at our track record. We can flip. We can. You can get to Europe through us. And I think give a guy two, three years, a young guy that's hungry, that's willing to prove himself. I think it's worth it. So yeah, I, I do think striker is a position that's needed, and I think Ernst is definitely in the on the right path. I uh, you really made some good points here. Uh, for me, I feel like this fan base has made it known that. They feel like it's a need. We need another striker. I don't have those same sentiments. Of course, it'd be nice. It's like having an extra toy in the toy box. Of course, it'd be nice to have an extra striker, right? But I don't feel like it's a need, like some some fans are are stating here. Um, and, and to your point, you know, I agree, man. Like, why not hit up that that South American market? Those guys can come here for a cheaper price than going over to get those kids from Europe. And their, their upside is exponential. You're look, you're seeing it around the league, like like you just mentioned as well. I mean, I just how many times have I told you, like, I wish the union would get over like that fear, whatever it is, with Colombia, because dude, I see what's going on in Colombia with Pascal Cruz. There's there's kids there that can play here and play really freaking well. But because you know the union got bit by Carlos Valdez and America de Cali, like I just feel like they don't they don't want to go back down there. But 
yeah, just definitely hit up that South American market. And when we're talking about this price range, you can absolutely cut up with, with a good player there. Uh, good stuff there. We'll see what happens. Of course, we'll keep you locked. Uh, of course, uh, Tim, Zach, and, and now Steve have been killing it with the writing. So, guys, keep an eye on Philly Sports Network. We'll keep you posted with any news that comes up with transfer news here. But, of course, guys, we did play a match this past Saturday. Uh, we were back at home. Felt like it's been a long time since we were back at home. But the Philadelphia Union um, in front of, I believe it was 16, some, 16,000. 16, it was a pretty area. good crowd. It yeah, was, it was a, a great crowd. crowd. Yeah. It was a great crowd. Absolutely. Um, the Philadelphia Union against uh, another division rival. We just got them playing the Red Bull. Then you got to play against DC United at home, get a big 2 1 win. And I will tell you what, I was not feeling confident after the first couple of minutes. DC. They showed what they've been doing over the past couple games. Are fast. They had a couple of good opportunities. Uh, but the Philadelphia Union with their composure, great building from the back. Alley to Gazdag with a nice chip and Sergio Santos putting it through the five hole, as I was saying to the Philly sports guy. Big one, nothing. Uh, second half, game was very, very restless. So a lot of interesting calls, a lot of, uh, hey, ref, you suck. You know, that type of stuff was going down. Uh, a couple goals were taken away, but luckily – uh, we got we got the game sealer. For, uh, for we, I'm sorry. I should, let, let me backtrack. We had a PK in in, in it was the 60 something minute for it, was, yeah. it felt like the Red Bull game. Um, and and Assad put the PK away. And then that's when in the uh, in the 86 minute I believe or the 85th minute I believe it was Sergio Casper leading the the, the uh, transition. Sergio to Casper. Casper making Bill Hamid look bad. And the Union get the two get the two one lead. And then the game stops. Quinn Solomon comes in. I'm all excited. We get to see Quinn. Hopefully, we get another bicycle kick. And then the game stops with four minutes left. And of course, we had our whole, <laughs> we had our whole, uh, our raid delay, the whole thunderstorm in the area. Um, and of course, uh, we were chilling. A lot, most of us were chilling down in the, uh, in where you could say dry. Honestly, um, I was in the middle of Keystone State Ultras, and Sons of Ben, just chanting and screaming and partying like, like it, it was uh, the Supporter Shield win. And it was a dandy old time here. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with Justin on this one, man. Um, that Sergio goal, it was beautiful by Sergio. And Sergio has been hot. But we're not talking enough about Gazdak with that assist. It was just a tap, Justin. But I've never seen anyone do that in Union history. I'm not even kidding you. What, what was your thoughts on that goal? I want to hear from you. So, yeah. I, 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 like, I, I think... When it comes to that goal, that little touch does not get looked at with as much appreciation as it should. Because if if God's like does not flick that, Andy Nahar is cutting that. Like that's been cut out. That's cut out right away. Like it, you know, you you have Olivier throws it up to 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 Ali. Ali looks up, sees the run, and then I mean, plays a great pass, and it was. Just enough within Godstock's reach. To see, I mean, he was making them run, and he looked. He looked over his shoulder. You had you had Casper to the right, and you had and you had you had Sergio to the left, and it Sergio was in acres of space, and all he did, all he did was just flick it. He knew he knew Sergio was running on there. All he did that was a simple flick, puts it perfectly into the path. Sergio takes a couple touches. Puts it right, right through, right through Bill's legs, you know, and, and and that's, I mean, right there, it just goes to show, being Gazdag was in the right place at the right time to make the play, and and I was looking on, you know, on, on MLSsoccer.com, they had their power rankings, and the Union were were ranked fourth, and what it said was it talked about the goal, and it just said if Gazdag can. Start really get going with this offense. Watch out, Eastern Conference. Like this team could be dangerous, and I think you're starting to see flashes, flashes of what Gazdag can bring. And honestly, it kind of makes me excited to see what the what what he could do given a little more time. Yes, he for right now in these couple of games, I've seen that he's able to create for others, which just got me so excited. But once he learns how to get those goals on his own, it's a whole new ball game. Tim, I got a question for you. I want I want to save, so I'm going to move to Zach real quick. Zach, okay. the referee, man, it's a little questionable. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little questionable, guys, man. What 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 did you take away from some of these calls, in, especially? In that I'm glad. Half? 
I'm glad you I'm glad you asked me about this because that I was I was I was home watching the game, okay? So I got the replay of the Leon Flock foul about four times. And that was as stone cold a penalty as you could have ever asked for in your life. Flock gets to the ball first, guy sticks his leg out. I don't care if there's he touches his pinky toe to it's a foul. Hundred percent foul, and the best part was Flock got up right away. Like he wasn't trying to sell anything, as if he didn't get fouled. Like he was like, "I'm going to play on." The ref did not call it, and it was crazy to me because I saw it. And I, as soon as he, as soon as he, um, as soon as he went down, I was like, "That's a penalty kick!" Like immediately. And then I saw the, I saw the replay. I was like, "Yeah, they, they're going to reverse it. Like they have to." And then he went over to VAR and he didn't reverse it. And I was like, "Are we watching two different things here?" And apparently what the broadcast team said was like he was watching a different replay than what I we were watching at home. And I found that very odd because the one that I saw, to me at least, I don't know if you guys have seen the replay or what you think, but to me I was like, yeah, it's a penalty kick, like 100%. Yeah, it, it based on the replays that they showed around the, the, the board, it – it was very close. I don't think it didn't feel like there was enough to overturn it. Even from the front angle, it looks like at the very least he gets some contact on his foot. And, and, you know, and I like, you know, MLS, you know, instant replay was like, well, it's, it's not clear. Well, he doesn't get the ball. And I'm like, right there, he doesn't get the ball. Regardless of what else happens, there was contact. Like, that's, that's a foul. Like, regardless, I don't care. There's a card. It's a foul. Yeah. 100%. Hundred oh, percent, totally man. agree. That was that was definitely definitely rough there, uh, Tim. So what I wanted to ask you: so this match started around seven thirty on Saturday night, yeah. and from if if I'm not mistaken, you put out the last tweet on the Duke by the River account at eleven thirty. Is this the longest <laughs> union match you've ever been a part of? And, and give me the timeline of, of the from from the minute they stopped game till to the return. Sure. Uh, to that first question, I don't know if this is the longest game I've ever been to. There's been some Open Cup games that have been I hear. ridiculously I hear. crazy. I don't know if anyone is, re- is remembering the uh, the Dust Bowl games, but when lot, the practice fields used to be Lot B and they were dust, like they were dirt <laughs> lots, and a storm would pick up the dirt and literally blow it into the stadium, and they would have to start calling games uh, you know, off because it would get in the players' eyes. It would get in people's eyes in the stands. It was is awful, uh, but that happened in a few Open Cup games. There were some thunderstorms, so I don't know if it was the longest delay I've ever been a part of, but I'll say it was the wildest delay. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, I know Justin was with me. We were just kind of chilling right under uh, the Keystone State Ultras uh, right. section. Actually, the little gate was open there, so we just kind of plopped ourselves in there and, and chilled out, and uh, we, we had a party. Like the Keystone State Ultras at Sons of Ben came together, had a party, and Supporter Shield made it down there. We we're doing trophy lifts, like, you know, chanting the whole time, and, uh, you know, getting uh, getting everyone riled up. I'm sure the, the players could hear it because I know the press room was right behind where everyone was chanting, um, and right next to that is the locker room. So I'm sure, you know, players are hearing some of it out there and, and uh, you know, getting fired up as well to go play that last five minutes, which – was awful soccer. The The field actually held up pretty well, but I mean, the players were what an hour and a half, two hour delay. Uh, you know, didn't, didn't look great, but yeah, no, that was a, it was a crazy time. Lightning, thunder everywhere, you know, people trying to run to their cars, getting to their cars, but then getting flooded out, trying to go home. Uh, oh my God. It, was a, it was a time for sure. And then it was, you know, 10 degrees cooler and there was no uh, weather in sight at 11:30 when the game ended. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it's, you know, you know it's crazy. Well, so I'm I'm leaving, right? I'm leaving the Super Super Park and there's this fan comes up to me right before I leave the gate. He's like, "Come here, man." Cuz he's Big old hug. He's like, I don't know you, man, but I'm so excited. I felt like, you know, you're at your favorite concert when you're growing up. You got like random people hugging you and you're like just partying with random people. It was <laughs> it was an absolutely special night. It was great. Uh, guys, a, 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 uh, you know, whoever wants to jump in, it, you add anything else that you took away from this match uh, on Saturday night? I'll say one more uh, thing about Daniel Gazdag real quick. Uh, I know we talked about his, you know, the importance that he had on that first goal with that perfect touch uh, that he had there to spring Sergio. Uh, but on the second goal, he's actually the reason the union got that counterattack. He was still in there in the what 84th, 85th minute 
And he was the one that stopped the DC attack to get the ball to Leon Flock, who then hit the outlet pass to Sergio. Uh, so his impact has been twofold uh, now since he's joined the union. He's shown that he can really be a box to box midfielder and also a, a really, really good number 10. Um, and I believe that was his first 90 minutes for the union. So he's getting into that full fitness. And uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to need to see what he can do uh, for most of these games coming forward, because there's a lot of them here in the next few weeks. Yeah, I uh, it, it's yeah. definitely going to be interesting. Um, I, I think to to add on on Tim uh, for that for Casper's goal, I know Tim and I both like collectively are like hearts jumped into our into our into our into our, into our stomachs <laughs> when we saw Sergio cut that back. We all yeah. just screamed, "No!" Yeah, like, we were like, "Oh no!" Like. Yeah, and, we wanted and, him like, to hit that first time pass with his right foot, and he will never hit that first time pass with his and, right foot. And then, and then, like as Casper, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, and like Bill gets a hand on him, he gets a hand on it. And I'm like, I thought I was like, oh my god, I need to keep this out, and like Casper's gonna be looking to the sky, and, and yeah, it was man, that that was that was, it, like that goal when it finally went in, like ironically, right before like. They 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 called him. We're like you know, and they, they, they literally they called him right then, and we're like, like what are you talking about? What lightning? And because like there have been like flashes kind of during the game, but they didn't stop anything. And then all of a sudden, it like you heard it, and then then it like immediately opened up, like just it just uh, came down, and you know, like you know, like we're, we're, we're waiting. We actually like we stood there for a little bit kind of wait and then we're like okay let, 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 let's go down and like you could feel something in the air like it was weird with the way yeah. you know like like you could feel like you know like a lightning strike like you could feel it in the air it was definitely a not the pun electric environment yeah. uh but and, yeah and then we get back you know everyone a lot of people had left and it was you know it was tim and i and my friend eddie who i have tickets with and we're also or so we moved like basically right over to like 130 like seven and we're sitting right behind, and like, it was like it was a weird feeling because like not a lot of people were in the stadium. DC fans had been ushered out, which security, I, I will say, security kind of goofed. Uh, a lot of them told people that the game was over, um, it, but sec- some, but yet some security I talked to, yeah, did know did know the league policies, um, and did know that they couldn't call it yet, um. So I, I will say that was a bit of a like it would have been interesting to see the DC fans if they had stayed. Um, but no, overall it was a what, yeah definitely one of the longer games that I've been to. Uh, but but listen, I also for the second straight week I I have a correct score prediction. Which there you go. I, I that's that that streak's gonna end definitely tomorrow. I, I can I can already feel that. Uh, but no, overall a, a good game, and I, I definitely think uh, I definitely think it's it's going to be an interesting uh, interesting test. And oh my, geez, did, did did Johnny just drop? Johnny just disappeared. Yeah. Oh man. Great. Oh, what crazy. are we supposed to do? I don't oh know. What God, are we God. supposed to I do? Know, I know Zach. You had some thoughts here. I'm taking over hosting privileges yeah. until Johnny gets back. You had thoughts Absolutely. on this game. Absolutely. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, I, I think that I think the thing that I was ultimately looking for with this game was um, performance over result, considering how poorly we've played the last three games prior to this one, uh, and and it was it was a lot more um, uh, it it was it made me feel a lot better about the season going forward because they did definitely did bounce back um, from that poor poor three game skid that they went on, and. Um, yeah, Gazdag looked good. I, I look forward to seeing him more. Um, I think that when we buy one of the strikers that's on my list, uh, he'll get a lot of assists to that guy, whoever it is. Um, and then also a testament to how left-footed players can be only left-footed, that Sergio <laughs> Santos assist to Casper Shabilko is 
the ultimate testament to that left-footed players do not need a right foot because as as he was dribbling down the line I was like he should shoot this like just right now with his right foot he should just shoot it and then I was like oh he should pass it with his right foot and then he didn't do either of those things ended up touching it back almost getting it taken from him just getting the pass off to Casper and Casper squeaking it in. But I was like you guys, I was stressing the entire time that play was going on because I was like, God, there were just so many things wrong with that. And just because he's a lefty, he's allowed to get away with stuff like that. And it, yeah, so that was funny. But um, yeah, so that's my take on the game. Uh, it was entertaining. So that's always good. Yes. Yes. Of course, we got the entertainment factor there. And most importantly, guys, of course, we had the three-game winless streak. Of course, this gets us three points now. And, uh, and we can feel good. We can kind of build off of this, you know, D.C., you know, although it's not D.C. that we all remember. It's a team that's kind of trending upwards. It's a young team that, that came out with energy, and then we kind of saw that. And they definitely made it an interesting match. But, guys, this week is really important, right, because we have to go down to Florida. And, you know, it's been really chippy with both Florida clubs down there. Um, and with the way the standings are looking in the Eastern Conference, man, it is tight as can be. Uh, so today, guys, of course, we're going to do the two for one. We're going to preview both Orlando and Miami uh, in, in this episode today. So we're going to start off with previewing Orlando. And, of course, you know, as always, guys, trying to get you guys the best possible coverage for the o Orlando match. So without further ado, make, making his debut – we have an honorary Orlando City fan, Freddie Alacron. Freddie, what's going on, my man? How you doing? I'm doing all right, guys. How you guys doing? Good. Oh, we're blessed here, man. We're we're, uh, we're 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 feeling good after the DC match. We're we're ready for you guys, and we're we're excited to have you on, Freddie. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy to be here. Uh, yeah, let's let's break it down. Let's do it, Freddie. I was a little skeptical, Freddie, because as as we know, I'm the resident Colombian here in Philadelphia. And when I saw we had a Quatroiano here, I was like, ah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, <saw that. laughs> I still listen. I still feel that six one beating you guys gave us a couple months ago. Yeah, that's all in the past now. Let's look forward to our future, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Freddie, so with me, I'm, I'm always curious about asking fans kind of how they got into the MLS and their club that they follow because, Freddie, you know, this is a new club. I mean, I'm sorry, this is kind of a newer league compared to the other big leagues here in America. So for you, Freddie, how did this love for Orlando start? Uh, really? Uh, originally, I'm actually from New Jersey. Uh, hey. Down here in like uh, 2003, if I believe. Literally, my folks said, pack up your crap. We're going down to Florida. I'm tired of these winners. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. I'm, I was right out, of, right out of middle school. So I'm like, I'll start a new school anyway. I'm not going to be winning my friends. Let's just go, I guess. Uh, yeah, so we moved down. Um, and, you know, that's that that era has actually been very empty in my, in this, in my soccer verse, really. Um, once I got down here, I was like, man, there's a lot of Dominicans and Puerto Ricans here. It's baseball <laughs> everything. It's baseball everything. So that's, that's what dominates. Uh, Full disclosure: I am not a fan of baseball. I don't. I'm not dissing anyone that does, but I was not a fan. So, like, I was kind of basically sportless because I couldn't relate to anybody, right? So, uh, you know, as I got older and I decided to stick around, uh, you know, in my personal life, I met with people that tend to love the beautiful game, and uh, we got going from there. And then all of a sudden, uh, I heard there was a team that was moving from Austin to Orlando. Uh, ironically. <laughs> uh, in the USL, USL Pro at the time, uh, they were making some noise. It was like two. It was I forget what year it was. Um, it's escaping me now, but uh, I think like ten years ago. And I was kind of interested. I was, I was like, yeah, okay, I got to keep tabs. And then I finally got to go to a game, and, and then I was hooked. Uh, of course, it was the game I got to go to was the final for the championship. Um, I get, I forget who it was. was it against Charlotte. I believe it was against Charlotte. It was a very, very, very uh, drunk night. So kind of, it kind of escapes me. But I remember that was a good time. Uh, and then a year after that, the following season, that's when we joined the MLS in 2015. So um, that's how I got into Orlando City specifically. And you stuck with them through some of these heartbreaks. Oh uh, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's it's rough, and you know, especially you know uh, when you have a team at the time that seemed a little sexier opening up or starting up down the road. Uh, the temptation was there to flip. Uh, luckily, I didn't. That's a dumpster fire. Uh, my apologies to your next guest. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys are looking at the scores at all. But oh, no. Oh, we, yeah. we were watching that game, Freddie. Trust me. It, 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 I, switched to I switched to Atlanta, Cincinnati. That's how much I did not want to watch that dumpster well, fire. I mean, well, at least that uh, that has a chance to be a little bit interesting. I mean, that's just more dumpster fire, though. It's one thing when it's one dumpster fire versus another. It's a different it's different when your when your dumpster fire is taking on the top of the east. So, you know. <laughs> that's 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 pretty pretty funny. Uh, Freddie, I, I, what I, what I want to know from you, man. So obviously, you know, last year, it's funny because a lot of people felt like we were going to both meet in the MLS's back uh, finals there, right? Because Orlando and Philly, for most part, look like the two better teams for most of the tournament. Obviously, it didn't happen that way, at least for us. Right. Um, right. But we never really got to see you after that. Like I, I, all all four of us were looking forward to play Orlando. We never got that chance to play against you guys. So this year, you know, you guys are still find, found a way to kind of stay in the top half of the Eastern Conference tables here. But what is mm-hmm. what's this team like this year? What can you tell us the difference between 2020 to 2021? So at the beginning of the season, it seemed like uh, it was just it was just a continuation of the 2020 season uh outside of course being eliminated from the playoffs by new england um the same this the the momentum was kind of it's still there like it just felt the same like it just felt like we're continuing uh where we left off very much like you know like back to the future part two takes off or starts off where back to the future left off uh so it was it was really good and you know, as you as you said we managed to stay pretty close to the top of the Eastern Conference, but historically, July uh, has not been a very good month for uh, uh, Orlando, historically speaking. Um, that's when things really start going awry. Uh, outside of last year, last year with an asterisk, you know, that was during the MLS's back tournament. Everything was uh, weird that year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean, that's the only difference, really. It wasn't during the regular season play, so I guess that was the exception last year, but Generally speaking, this is when the injuries start coming. Uh, this is where um, the temperature rises. Uh, yeah, it gets a lot hotter. Uh, even if you live here, I, I tell this, I tell Justin this all the time. Like we tr- we treat uh, July and August just like you would treat uh, January, or February up north. Like you don't leave your house. You crank the the thermostat the opposite way. You know, you want a <laughs> nice crisp sixty eight degrees in your house while it's 105, although it's been a historically low temperature for uh, for the summers down here. Uh, yeah, climate change. Um, but yeah, July has not been very nice. It's starting to seem that way as well. Uh, we had uh, Seb Mendez get uh, at the 11th minute walk off the pitch in Toronto last week or this past week. Um, so it's it's we're it's basically on brand so far, and you know, as slowly dropping in the table is also on brand that goes along hand in hand with uh, what has happened to us every July up until now. So, how how has this attack uh, been uh, faring for you guys this year? I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, how has this attack been faring for you guys this season? How's it looked? Yeah, the attack the attack is okay. Obviously, the, the the star up front is Daryl DK, right? Um, the it's so funny because I every he's still now I know he's only played like three games since he's come back from Barnsley, but I, I was so agitated when we played him. I was like, this guy never needed to put on a shirt again or the purple shirt again because it's gonna hurt his his uh his sale, uh, potentially getting injured or he underperforms in in what some people would call. Uh, uh, I'm a little bit more of a theory league than the championship, so uh, I was like, This guy needs to not put on a shirt, and of course, he went on as a sub, didn't really do anything, like what he didn't get hurt or anything. And then he showed up the following game, third game, I believe he didn't actually do anything, but and now he's on international duty. Hopefully, that kind of that value's going up after this. Is about gold cup, yeah. I mean, we love the guy. Uh, if he like came out and said, I don't want to go anywhere, I want to stay here. 
then he's more than welcome to stay. But I think we want that cash money. <laughs> well, cash money's going to, to, to Europe. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. This has been an interesting news day for uh, Orlando City. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys heard. Uh, today, the the sale to the Will family has officially gone through. Uh, so, oh, uh, that's right. Flavio is no longer the owner of the club. Um, so now the Will family released a statement that basically they are partnering or uh, taking on the owners of the. Orlando Magic as advisors, and if you guys know who the owners are, it's the Voss family. Yes, that the Voss family, Amway, Betsy DeVos, like it's them. So we are all pretty mad. <laughs> uh, if you go onto OC Twitter, uh, it's it's either fun to watch because everyone's melting down and getting all mad, which is I'm I was one of them. I'm very furious about that announcement. Um, and or you could join in either heckle us or <laughs> or uh stand by us so it's uh it's it's been an interesting day and then of course within like the last two hours the the club released a statement uh regarding chris mueller that chris mueller has signed with another club uh with a pre-contract uh in supposedly Whoa. scotland that's the word on the news that's the word on the street i mean uh they just say europe and all the official communication but it sounds like it's somewhere in scotland nowhere uh there's no um specific club being mentioned though so so there's a little bit of rumblings that's aberdeen which kind of makes sense it's yeah that's what there. I'm hearing. um from it uh if y'all remember he was with atlanta for a little bit there um so that kind of makes sense that all the mls moves it's scotland may go to aberdeen yeah, i'm actually but shocked. hey freddie at least at least you're not atlanta I mean, Atlanta to watch I don't right know. Now. Atlanta's been having fun with us today too about the DeVos thing, but there are, I think, I think they have bigger issues than they have no room to talk. Who's advising our ownership team? So. Yeah, literally no room to talk right now. So yeah, wait, is, this, is this the same ownership group that owned the Minnesota Vikings? Is that was that yep, what I heard? Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's some, uh, of course, Minnesota United supporters that we uh, that I am kind of friendly with uh, who are of course Viking fans and they're like eh, just be careful <laughs> that's what they, that's what they <laughs> just be careful buyer beware you know just be careful what they sell you uh so well I don't know yeah, how you feel about this... the NFL but it looks like you're a Vikings fan I'm just kidding <laughs> no 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 thank you <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so so Freddie, um, how how do you how do you see this team aligning against against us tomorrow? Uh, like I said, historically, uh, Orlando City has not been very good in July. Uh, I'm actually looking at the injuries right now. Obviously, Daryl DK is out on international duty. Um, Antonio Carlos, one of our. Uh, it's hard to say who our starting center backs are because three out of the four are definitely uh, starters, uh, starter quality. So there's a little bit of rotation going on there, but Tano Carlos is one of them and he's questionable for tomorrow. So um, I think, uh, I mean, I think we're just, I don't know what Oscar Perez is going to do because he's kind of been unpredictable in the last two to three games. He seems to be either rotating uh, when he probably shouldn't be rotating. Uh, and then uh, not rotating when he probably should. So, uh, it's it's going to be really interesting to watch uh, the next few games, especially with these injuries out uh, that are on the list here that I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I what I wanted is was gonna I was gonna mention that as well. I mean, for me, like I mean, you, Oscar Pareja, I, I know very well. I mean, I, I admire what the guy does, even though he's obviously not my coach here in Philadelphia. But you know, how important has he been for Orlando? Yeah, it uh, has brought new life to the to not just the club but the fan base. Um, oh. I mean, here's the thing: every every team, sports team you can think of, especially here in the states, uh, has fair weather fans, right? So like they're interested when it's all hype, they're there when it's you know when it's the talk of the town, and then when they start underperforming, you know attendance starts to drop a little bit, they start trickling away. Those uh, purple shirts tend to be hung in the back, and they, or they become lawn mowing shirts. <laughs> uh and and stuff like that so, so the fan base is slowly coming back um 
it's bound up. I mean, here, no one wants to talk about it, but there, the stadium is, it's not been packed. Uh, I know COVID aside, uh, I mean, with COVID going on, I know that's a big factor, but even before then, um, it was, I know I went to opening day in, in 2020 against the uh, NYCFC and I was expecting a sellout crowd because, you know, we fans were sold on us on Oscar, but yeah, but it wasn't sold out. And I was a little bit surprised and, and I talked to a lot of my friends who, you know, who used to go with me to these games. And of course, like I said, COVID has impacted so many, so much of our lives that I kind of lose touch with people. And I've kind of run into a lot of them recently. And a lot of them don't even realize how well we're doing. They're like, oh, wow, we're actually good. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we are. I don't know. About, <laughs> I don't, I don't, you're allowed to say we, uh, since, since you're not aware that we, we are performing pretty well. <laughs> but um, I think that that's important for to get fans that were kind of lukewarm back uh, back in the stands and back on getting back to getting being able to get out of their way to watch the team play. Um, Man, Freddie, I'll tell you, like that's not only a battle that you guys have to deal with, but I will go to say most of MLS markets have to deal with it as well. I mean, here in Philadelphia, I mean, you lived up here in the Northeast. You know how crazy Philly sports fans are. And as crazy and as passionate as this Philly sports market is, you know, we still have people here that just want to discredit the Philadelphia Union. And right now, if you, I don't know how well in tune you are with Philly sports, but if you look at it as a whole landscape, the Union are probably the most successful club at this at the most successful team at this current moment in Philadelphia. It's it's a tough mm-hmm. challenge. And I just honestly think it's just going to come with time, man. And, and But you guys have – at least you guys are starting to put together, like, quality soccer on the pitch, right? That's, like, half the battle. So I think whatever right. time, Orlando will come through too, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is really um, – to, to sell fans to come back, uh, this is kind of our last shot. Like we just talked about, uh, Chris Mueller's contract is at the end, up at the end of the year, and he's already found a new club. Uh to go to uh nani's is up i believe this year and it sounds like he's going back to portugal uh so he won't be sticking around uh he has he's expressed uh, uh interest or desire to retire with sporting uh his i believe it's his boyhood club i could be wrong um mm-hmm. he he's very he wants to do back go back and do that uh and there's a couple other contracts that are kind of up and loan deals are almost up so I mean, after this season, we're almost kind of rebuilding again. Uh, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But if anyone can rebuild a squad, it's going to be Oscar Brahea. So, and that front office. Luckily, uh, our front office at the moment, as long as the Will family doesn't, you know, decide to do what they want to do necessarily, that's against what's happening now. Uh, that front office should be able to take care of business. Uh, and I mean, even now though, we are doing, we're doing, we're as successful as we are right now without uh, three DPs. We only have two. We have an empty slot. Holy crap. That's good business. So, These guys are winning. It's impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. I mean, there's a little bit of question of is Pato really not a DP? <laughs> but we'll, <laughs> I get, we'll have to wait into the event. Wait, 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 wait. Is Orlando pulling a Miami, Freddie? <laughs> no, because they haven't caught us yet. <laughs> that's good, now, that's good business now that's good business <laughs> where is pato is he, is he injured right now so pato uh got injured in the first game of the season i'm not sure if you guys saw that uh yeah. it's really interesting because there was a, a lot of the players on their socials last week and that uh when they arrived at toronto they almost made it seem like a make it a point to have pato in the in the in the photos and so he traveled with the team um i don't believe he was on the game day roster um so what the point was to travel i don't know because they were there less than 24 hours from what i understand um because you know i'm not sure i mean you guys are probably aware about the how the restrictive canada has been with the sporting events and this and that i mean they didn't know they knew less than 48 hours before kickoff that uh that they need to go to canada so that kind of worked out. Uh, the entire squad made it, so it's nice to oh, know so the that. the whole squad's vaccinated. 
Yes, that's what that exactly said. Unlike Cincinnati, is what it seems like. Um, yeah. I mean, something's not something's not right about Cincinnati, Freddie. Uh, I know exactly what's right, and his name is Jeff Jeff Cameron. <laughs> a little too far right, if you will. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I, that boy is proud. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 awesome stuff, right? Um, I want to throw it to my guys here. Let's let's get to the union side of it. Um, Zach, I'll, I'll get you in on this one, man. Um, we're curious what you think the starting lines will look like tomorrow, man. We just got the Saturday. We got to play this Sunday, man. It's a crazy week. How do you think this will uh, look like tomorrow? Yeah, it is. A, it is a crazy week. Um, so I believe Jamiro's back after he's serving his suspension for yellow cards. Um. I'm I'm curious to see how the midfield lines up. I assume Gazdag will be at the top of the at the top of the diamond. Um, Bedoy on the right, but then does uh, Jim go flock Montero? Does he sub Montero in after a little bit because he was out for a game and he wants to get his legs back under him? Um, against Orlando, though, I feel like you got to go all out. You guys know my thoughts. I think Flock should be at the six. Montero should be at that left center mid spot. Um, and then you you have to play Casper and Sergio up top at this point because they're, unless you're playing Quinn. But I don't know if Jim's ready to do that yet um, or if it's really needed. Um, so I, I would say the back line's going to stay the same, although Gleznez has been uh, – has been scaring me a little bit every once in a while with those those very very risky passes he's been trying to make. That outside the foot pass he tried to do the other day that went right to uh, DC's forward. I was like, what, dude? What's going on? Um, but yeah, the back line should be the same. I think the midfield will be. Uh, it'll probably be uh, Montero and uh, El Brujo, but I would like to see Flock at the six. Um, unless Montero doesn't start, like I said, so we'll, we'll see, but that, that's basically the lineup that I'm thinking will be out for this weekend or not this weekend, tomorrow, tomorrow. It feels weird. I know it feels, it yeah. Feel weird. Yeah. Uh, Tim, do you agree with that? You, you think that's going to be the, um, partially, I mean, I, I think there's no way Jim is going to take out El Brujo right now. Uh, he's in the last two games, he's won almost every duel that he's been in. I know he hasn't always, you know, looked good after that, or he'll kind of be like <laughs> challenges uh, to say, you know, the least there. Uh, but Jim is going to start him uh, until he gets another red card. Like that's just, I think that's how it's going to go for him, uh, unless he really is going to rotate in these two games. Uh, I see El Brujo being there, and also I think the only really other question mark was who's going to be in goal, and I think uh, I think he's going to roll with Joe Bendick, which scares me. Uh, but he showed well, you know, uh, against DC and it's, you know, going up against one of his former clubs. I know he's played for a lot of clubs in MLS, but Orlando is one of his former clubs. Uh, we know because, you know, we, Bendick faced him, uh, it, against him there. <laughs> Ricky Darnetta, throwback. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, the rest of the lineup kind of, you know, sorts itself out. I, it, I think, um, uh, Jamiro will be back in uh, on that left side and, and flock will go to the bench and Jim kind of talked about it. Uh, you know, he has five midfielders for four spots right now. And I think flock is the odd man out at the moment until a Brujo does something reckless. Uh, and and I, I think it's dumb that it has to come to that because I do think flock is the better player at the six. Uh, but El Brujo has just been curtains guy over the last two years. So I think that's who's going to stick with. And then up top, you have to start, Gazda get the 10, Santos and Shabilko, those three, if they can get it clicking, like Justin mentioned earlier uh, at the uh, you know MLS power rankings, like they're if they can get it going, it's it, it's gonna be dangerous. So I think they stay in. Yeah, and El Brujo doing something dumb is a, a when, not an if, because it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I know. <laughs> did did you guys happen to see after the yellow card was given to El Brujo, he go he almost like ripped his shirt. I heard the I thought he was gonna fight every I thought he was about to fight everyone. Like yeah. everybody. He's wild. He's a, absolute wild. Um AK Game, I can't show the comment because it will slow it slows my laptop down here, but we are on Philly Sports Network, uh, and we're going to try to do that going forward. We are the uni podcast for Philly Sports Network, so we're going to try to put that up on the, the PSN one, uh, the PSN channel. 
But for right now, I, I don't, it's kind of the comments are kind of slowing down the laptop. So I want to make sure we can keep everyone here. We can get through this podcast. But AK Gaming, as always, man, all of us here, we appreciate you always tuning in and checking us out here. Um, all right, guys, let's get to the nitty gritty of it. It is prediction time. And of course, as always, we are gentlemen here. We will allow Freddie the Orlando fan to start off here. Freddie, what do you think is going to happen in this match tomorrow night? And give me your final score. I think uh, the tired legs of Orlando City are going to catch up to him. Um, I do not predict an Orlando City win. Uh, but I also don't predict a win for the Union because we this is a home game. And we've been pretty well doing pretty well at home. So I'm going to say 2-2 two, two draw. Let's give let's entertain some people. <laughs> let's get the people going here. I like it. I like it. All right, Justin, give it to us, man. How do you see this game going? Um, I I think of the 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 two games in the four day stretch. I think this is the tougher one. Uh, and typically on the road, the Union tend to be a little more conservative. Uh, usually. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling. I, I've, I've been right the last few times, so I want to. I want to use my my prediction powers for, for for good. Um, my 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 heart le- says I won the Union win, but my brain really says a one one draw. Um, and I think I'm gonna go with with that. I think it's gonna be a one one draw. Um. I think you're gonna keep you're you're gonna have an eye on 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 Sunday um, because I think that's definitely the way more winnable of the two, um, and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game. I think the lineup. I mean, you're you're probably you probably I think Tim's right. You probably flip out Leon for Jamiro and maybe bring Leon off the bench, or maybe you keep you maybe you you play Leon on Sunday. Um, but yeah, I think one one draw feels realistic, and honestly, a point out of Orlando, where we've historically kind of had mixed results, is not a bad thing. Never is, and it, it never is. Do you guys remember last time we were in Orlando? It was Jamiro's first year, and I forget who it was. Yeah. It's absolutely dirty slide tackle on Jamiro. It was one of my one of those moments where I got out of my seat there, but. One of those memories I have from this Orlando Philly matchup. Zach, what do you see happening tomorrow, man? All right. So I think the Union are going to play extremely well. They're going to build off what they did. But I think the win of El Brujo doing something stupid is going to happen in the first half against Orlando tomorrow. He's going to get a first half red card. And I think Joe Bendick is going to cost us a little bit. And we're going to lose 2 1 despite playing extremely well. Um, and I think that's, I think, I think the performance against Orlando going to Orlando is more important than the result we get against Orlando tomorrow. Um, because if you can go down there and show that you can play away from home in a place where historically you haven't been able to play well and put in a good performance, it'll bode well for the rest of the season. You can build confidence off of that. Um, but I just think the matchup against Orlando, uh, Tempers usually flare. It's usually very heated, um, and I think El Brujo is going to get caught up in that at some point and 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 pull a pull an El Brujo moment. Um, but I, I, I think I think that uh, I think they're going to play very well. I, I, the rest of the guys, I should say, besides El Brujo. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie, if you couldn't tell, Zach is our resident. Uh, we call him Negadelphia. He calls himself a realist. <laughs> a little bit pessimistic. Yeah, sometimes a realist is okay. Sometimes you need one in the group to bring you back down. I mean, I could have easily said Orlando 4 0, but luckily <laughs> I, am, I am that guy. I am the Zach of my size. So. <laughs> right, we need, that's why we love Zach. We need, we need Zach for that, for sure. For sure. If there was a prop bet for that, I'm going to let you know, Zach, because I think you should go take that on. Those, Dude, uh, if there's a Brujo. prop bet for El Brujo getting a red card, I might put 10 bucks down. <laughs> <laughs> Zach might come up big on tomorrow. All right, Tim, give me give me that prediction, man. Yeah, I mean, if Zach's the realist, I'm always the, uh, the optimist, uh, the one who gives you the score lines you want that don't ever happen. Uh, so here, here's what I see. 
it's on uh, on my uh, my preview article over on uh, Philly Sports Network as well. I, I see this game as one of the biggest games for the Union this year, and okay. I think you know if you want to stay up in the top of the East right now, if you look at the standings, it's really congested. If you lose to another team that's really close to you in the standings, it's just terrible. Uh, the Union have been playing well. Uh, they're kind of building now off of a draw, and then that win. Sergio Santos is hot. This front three, I keep talking about it, but if the front three can get it going, I think that they can score two goals in this match. Um, Orlando, they're going to score. They're going to score a goal. Nani scores a goal almost every 90 minutes right now. I think it's it's every 120 minutes or something like that, he scores a goal in, in, in MLS this year. So he's going to get one. Yeah. He's going to get one, and uh, the Union are going to get two. And I'm going to say, again, Gazdag gets his first. Uh, I'm going to say it every time. Until every he- single game. <laughs> every single game. <laughs> That's my uh, optimistic take. You'll be right, Tim. Hey, the best part about it is you're going to be right at some point. I, eventually. You're going to be right at some point. Is, is that Nani go right. at least uh, tender for uh, goal of the week? <laughs> no, it's a PK. It's a PK. Uh, so, well, well, it's a PK. He's gonna miss it. So. No, see, yeah. listen, Tim. <laughs> he made it last week. He Tim, made it last we're on, he didn't make it. He didn't make it last week. You're right. You're right. Tim, we're on the I same wavelength. Like like, he's gonna score a pen because El Brujo's gonna get a red card and give <laughs> up. A foul. It's gonna it's, happen. There we go. They're still gonna win. They're gonna get two right. goals. Listen, I'd be, I be. I I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> but you just got to go with what your head says sometimes. You know. That's that, fair. Also, that takes that takes away credit from Alex Bona, who uh, did stop the, the PK, but like fumbled the ball and it went in. So oh, that's, that's so mad. I was that. so mad as someone who scoreboard watches religiously as a Union fan who wants every other team in the East to just explode. <laughs> like to see that happen, to see him fumble the ball over the line, so mad. That's very funny. That's very funny. Uh, Freddie, Freddie, listen, it's been a pleasure having you on here, man. Seriously, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, give us your, the, uh, the social, where, pe- where can people find you? Uh, what, what are you, what are you posting? Can we get you to get through some Orlando city content somehow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, uh, I know historically, uh, a lot of my, my peers are not very friendly to other fan bases. Uh, but I am not one of them, uh, to the point where I, in 2020 until, you know, the COVID foiled us, uh, there was a little bit of discussion for a third SG out there just so they could. It's a little bit more uh, friendly, if you will, because uh, okay. because yeah, uh, I know the Ireland firm and Ruckus tend to ru- uh, rub people the wrong way, uh, including yours truly. So, um, so yeah, you guys can find me on Twitter uh, and Insta. Uh, the handle is at Freddie underscore a eighty nine. Uh, yes, it's very AOL screen name of me uh to have that handle but i'm out there uh constantly posting orlando city stuff constantly uh either di- either posting about uh, the women's national team men's national team and dissing ussf uh and i will say that uh all the thoughts are that are on there are on my own and yeah just check me out give me a follow i, I promise i don't bite <laughs> sounds good sounds good freddie freddie seriously thanks again and may the best team win tomorrow night, my man. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Uno más. Vamos Colombia. Freddy Alacron, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys. Of course, as we promised you, not only will we preview Orlando, but we are also going to be previewing Inter Miami. And I'm really intrigued of talking about this matchup here because, listen, we all remember what happened last time. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, to preview, of course, if this, there we go. To preview the Inter Miami match, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alex Winley. Oh, no. We have <laughs> <it. laughs> difficulty, everybody. <laughs> All righty. Let's take two, everyone. <laughs> Did it work? Did it work? We got Alex. Alex, what's going on? Hello? Oh, there, there you go. go. Okay. There we go. Yeah, hey, what's up, Alex? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, Alex is one of the co-hosts of the Hair on Outlet. It is one of the Inter-Miami podcasts. 
Uh, she does a great job of covering Inter Miami, and we're blessed enough with her presence here to preview this this match this upcoming weekend. Um, Alex, of course, tonight we kind of saw a scoreline, so we'll wait to get to that. <laughs> Rather be a little here bit. than watching yeah. that game. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's uh, brutal right now, honestly. Yes. Yes. Uh, Alex, we kind of wanted to know a little bit about you, Alex. So kind of what got you into the beautiful game? What got you into Inter Miami? And how, what got you into the, the hair on out there? So, yeah, I've been uh, a fan of soccer since as long as I've you know, been alive. I've played it in high school. I played it in middle school. I played it as a kid. And, you know, I've always been a big writer. So it was just a natural transition. I've always liked the game, the tactical side of it. So it, it was a bit of a no-brainer. Um, I got into writing with my, my college paper, and then it, it kind of snowballed from there. Very nice. And what? A, how did the love for Inter Miami start? Uh, well, I'm born and raised in Miami. We've had we haven't had an MLS team in you know it was before I was live really. They they folded. Uh, so um, yeah, it was just it, it's a natural thing, you know, hometown pride. Uh, yeah, I'm just glad we got our our MLS team back. Although they're pretty bad right now, I'm just happy we we have a team. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you, do you run into some of those Fusion fans every now and then? Yeah, a couple of them, a couple of the old heads who were there back then. Yeah, they're they're uh, part of the one of the three supporters groups that the club has right now. Well, that's awesome. That is yeah, yeah. That is pretty cool. I, you know, I, we we do have some history here in Philadelphia, but I mean, you guys literally had an MLS club before, and and you know, I mean, I wish the fusion that never would have left, but obviously things were different back then. But that that is definitely pretty cool there. Um, so. Uh, uh, kind of what we want to find out first, Alex, um, you know, we kind of saw you guys at our home opener earlier this year. You know, we were unveiling our Supporters Shield banner. You know, it was a great jolly night at Subaru Park. We're up one nothing, you know, and we were still on the high for Champions League. And then yeah. the Iguain brothers just ruined our night. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got Federico getting the goal, and of course Gonzalo gets the, the game winner, and then we were kind of shocked, and it kind of started like a bad form in MLS, but then we, we snapped out of that one. But yeah. well, how's this been? How's this team been since that win in Chester uh, in the beginning of the season? Uh, not very good, honestly. I th uh, we the club got a win against Cincinnati, which I think every MLS club should do, no matter what their form is. Cincinnati <laughs> also isn't the best MLS Jeez. club. So, but yeah, other than that, there's it's just been uh, this loss after loss, maybe a couple of draws, but Neville really hasn't been able to get it going. Still, I'm I'm watching. I have a stream on on my phone right now. Still, they haven't been able to really create any any anything offensively. So. Yeah, it's been pretty poor. Um, I'm not sure where the club goes. I'll be breaking it down, but it's been pretty bad. It wouldn't shock me to see, you know, maybe Neville get the axe. I know Gabriel Heinz did, Chris Armas did. It, 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 something needs to happen, but, yeah, it's not been good at all. Alex, if I may ask, look, yeah. you know, here in Philadelphia, the fan base would love to see kind of what you guys do, right? Get those – European stars come here, pay that big money. But we kind of have found a, a little bit of a model. It's kind of working as of right now. No MLS Cup, but it's working. You know, we've, we're developing from within these kids here. What I want to ask you, this model is cool. Like, you get to see Iguain, You can see Blase Matuidi and whoever else you guys bring. <laughs> but is this what you and the fan base would like to see from your MLS club? No, personally, um, I'm, I would say I'm pretty in tune with the fan base. We just want to win. Um, whenever I think the loudest cheers of the season has been when one of our homegrown talents, Edison Escona, has taken the pitch. I know a lot of people are, you know, they're just begging for something to root for. It doesn't have to be a European star. We just want players who play hard, who play for the shirt. We've got a couple of players like that with, with Gregory, Robbie Robinson. You know, Nick Marsman's in goal currently right now. He's been doing well, even though he did concede four goals, but that, I would say that's more in our back line. But, yeah, as of right now, you know, I, Inter Miami just need more players who n want to play and less players who are here on vacation, like Matuidi, Egoin. You know, you heard that quote about him coming on last, talking about the cigarette. Like, it, it didn't – it rubbed the fan base. Like, I, there's no words to describe it. It was just a, such a poor quote. It was so unprofessional, and it rubbed the fan base such a – in a in a bad way. So, right now, the fans are pretty resentful that, you know, the front office paid – 
all this money towards Pizarro, Matuidi, Iguain, and they're not really contributing or really making a difference on the pitch. Oh yeah, I got a word for it. It's it's uh, patronizing, and yeah. the exact the exact attitude that many European superstars come over here and listen. Iguain, I joke. Iguain is an embarrassment to balds. Uh, he listen, he was he was he wasn't in, and so is Brad Guzan. So there's a whole list. I could probably create a list. Of bald, you a bald eleven, a bald eleven of disappointments. Yeah, the the embarrass, the embarrassing bald eleven. Uh, but I mean, you, you have the, you have these guys that come over. I mean, Iguain was never in the best shape anyway. He comes yeah. over, and I mean, it is very clear from last year. And I was I was outside the stadium for his first game. When they came to Chester, and you know, we call we call the could he do it on a rainy night in Chester? The answer was no. When he skied a PK, and that kind of has been the story of his MLS career up to this point. His brother has outshone him, yeah, <laughs> for, for honestly, for the most part, yeah. Federico's a legend, so yeah, I'm really glad to have him on the roster. He should get some more playing time, but yeah. yeah. The many, the many questions for Miami. Uh, Zach, yeah. do you guys um, have any questions? Oh, well, I was just going to go off of, um, like, we're, we're, we're talking about a club that David Beckham's a part of, and obviously he was part of that youth movement for Man United back in the day where that whole class came up and they were phenomenal and they led to numerous Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues and stuff. So I, I'd have to imagine that his focus on the youth side of things has to be growing to some capacity because he understands how important it is. Um, and then also going on to the like European superstar thing, I think the issue that a lot of MLS teams have with bringing over European superstars is they bring over super superstars who weren't superstars in Europe they were just names in Europe as opposed to like guys like David Villa and Ibra and Chicharito coming over David Villa tore up the, like he, David Villa scored lots of goals he tore up the World Cup Ibra yeah. and that's the thing like the like David Villa was a big name in European football for a long time um Ibra same thing came over scored a lot of goals Chicharito's having a great year he's already got 10 goals this season I mean, Carlos Vela, a little different, struggled over in Europe, but had the name and came over and proved himself as a player who could make it in this league. Whereas Gonzalo Higuain, like, he had a couple seasons in Serie A where he played well. He kind of did okay at Real Madrid, but he wasn't like that guy that everyone knew, like, bringing over David Villa, like, oh, won a World Cup. Like, this guy knows how to play and knows how to score goals and isn't that overweight, lazy looking footballer like Higuain is. Um, so I think that's a model that a lot of teams need to get away from just bringing over anyone who wants to come over to the MLS, as opposed to bringing over guys who want to come play here because they want to challenge and want to still dominate a league like they did overseas. Yeah, for sure. I think with Higuain's case, I know, uh, you know, South Florida is really Latino heavy. So they they were plenty familiar with him for the wrong reasons, you know, the missed penalties, um, you know, basically not helping Messi at all with Argentina. Yeah. So yeah. he came with a lot of baggage down here and the fans know that. So anytime he's not playing well, like currently, I think he's getting taken off right now. You know, there's, there's always booze around the stadium. It, it It's just right now. It's just such a mess. If I could write a piece on it, it'd be well over a thousand words. It's, it's really bad. And I think it remind me with, this next group of DPs eventually when we get rid of Matuidi, Pizarro, and Iguain, they should go after, you know, like you said, younger, hungrier, maybe the right type of European type player that actually wants to come to MLS, like a Nani, Davi Villa, oh, you know, no. who wants to come to MLS and, you know, play and help develop the younger talent. Cause right now with Matuidi, with Iguain, even Pizarro, who, where there's, there's some, there's some rumors about him potentially moving back to Mexico. It's not working. And, you know, Neville's not done the greatest job, but he's not been given, you know, the best hand here. But I definitely agree with your point about that, about, you know, European stars. You know, it's not the right move, in my opinion, for Miami to do because South Florida is, does have a wealth of talent, you know, as far as the academy goes. So we had, we'd have to wait a couple of years for that to happen. But I, I firmly do believe that the future of this club is getting the right players in, getting the, the most talented uh, academy products on, on the pitch. And then Messi and Ronaldo when they're available. 
Yeah. <laughs> is he there? Yeah, in, in 2030. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is he there tonight? Is Messi at the match? I think he is. I think he yeah. said he was going to be, yeah. So great showing. Confirm, great showing. Yeah. One of my uh, friends and colleagues, Austin Roblard, he's at the game. I'll, I'll text him later, see if he saw him. But, yeah, I think he's there. That's crazy. That's pretty funny. And uh, so is uh, Paul Pogba. Yeah, Pogba and, uh, as well. Kepe, yep. I believe. We could use him in the midfield right now. Ah, so <laughs> so good a lot of places. So good a lot of teams. Him and Conte together, just totally unfair. It's amazing. <laughs> it, you guys are going to go away from the European stars to get Messi and Pogba. That's a, that's a, <laughs> not a couple years down the line. A couple years down the line. Yeah. We're going to develop their homegrowns first and then yes. bring in Messi. Oh, and then it'll be over. It'll be over. <laughs> that's a dream right there. Yeah, but to that point, I will say because I do think, especially with an expansion club, there is a benefit to getting some of these these European stars because you do listen. You're a new team, you know, and for a lot of these markets, you know, there's either a lot of competition with the other sports, or you know, it's something completely new, like soccer, completely new to this to this market. So being able to get those stars, you get the casual fans out there. You're able to kind of start building a fan base. But listen. Winning cures all. It's literally the best yeah. cure for everything. And right now, Miami, I understand where Miami fans come from. It's a little bit frustrating. Um, and, you know, after – when you guys beat us in Chester earlier this year, I thought you guys were going to be on your way, maybe sneak into the playoffs late, later on in the season. But it, it's it's definitely been tough. So, Alex, kind of, what, what, what happened tonight? Is it just one of those matches where, you know, one goal, the momentum is just completely gone or something that's been building up? <laughs> well – our back line right now, it's a bit patched work. We have, we had uh, four center backs starting along the back four. Christian McCoon, who's naturally a DM center back. He was at left back. We have Nico Figal, who's naturally a center back playing at right back. And we have uh, Shaw Cross playing with uh, Leandro Gonzalez Perez, which, you know, they're not the mm-hmm. fastest pairing. So it's a bit <laughs> harsh. Yeah, it's harsh. On our, our new goalkeeper, Nick Marsman, who's done a, a great job, even though, like I said, he, he let up four goals. He saved a couple of them, which could have made the scoreline worse. Uh, so our back line has been poor. Our midfield, there's no true ball carrier. There's no ball retention. Matuidi is statistically past it. He's not very good anymore. I don't know why the front office signed him. Uh, I wish we had Gregory. He's suspended with yellow cards, but right now it, it's just uh, it's just such a mess. Like I'm repeating the same points because it's it's a broken clock. There, I don't know what Neville's going to do. Maybe he, he gets sacked, but it, it's just been poor all around. It's just really poor. <laughs> that's what we tell. That's what we tell people. Listen, welcome to the club of being terrible. <laughs> You're supposed to suck for a few years. Not everyone. Atlanta is finding this out now. You're not supposed to be good to start out with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is that is what one hundred percent true here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so is the, I'm assuming the match is about to end soon there in in uh, in Fort Lauderdale there, but yeah. what do you, what do you? What could this lineup potentially look like on a turnover on Sunday against the Union? Um. Well, I think uh, Iguain, the bigger Iguain, Gonzalo, he just came off with a slight injury. Um. I don't know what quite happened, but I'll check in that later. So, uh, depending on how severe that is, he may just not start. Cron- Julian Carranza may start up there. Um. Pizarro, I believe he'll be with the Mexican national team, so you guys will not be seeing him. Uh, so yeah, it'll be a couple of changes, uh, changes, excuse me, Kieran Gibbs will probably start at left back. Uh, Calvin Leardom will be back from the gold cup with Suriname. So he'll be starting at right back and, um, yeah, a couple of changes, but I think it'll be largely the same, uh, lineup with Robinson on the left, Morgan on the right. Like I said, Carranza maybe up top, um, through as a 10, uh, maybe Jay Chapman, maybe Federico Iguain and yes, Matuidi and, uh, Gregory. Uh, that's a double pivot. Yeah, I, I want Neville to drop my tweety so bad, but yeah, that's probably what you guys are going to see uh, against the Union. That's that's starting eleven. Oh man, that's that's going to be tough. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you here on this one, Tim. Um, what do you see yeah. this lineup for the Union? Um, this Sunday, obviously, what we kind of know now about Miami. We're going to play Orlando tomorrow. What could you see us lining up in on Sunday? Yeah, um, I mean, I kind of talked about it when we were just previewing the Orlando match. I think the Union should put all of their emphasis against Orlando because it is a top team in the East, and you need to beat those teams if you want to stay at the top. Uh, no offense to, to Miami right now. I know they did beat us earlier in the year, but 
they're in last place in the East. Uh, so I think you can maybe see a little bit more rotation then if you run guys a little bit longer than maybe you would like to against Orlando. Um, so I think, you know, whatever happens with El Brujo, whether he gets a red card in Orlando or he plays 90 minutes in his shot, uh, you, then you would see Leon Flock starting at the six uh, against Miami. And I think that's a very solid option. Uh, you know, we, Zach knows <laughs> how good Zach he's going to like that. Uh, I mean, I would like that too, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I think you could see honestly a, a few changes. Um, the union don't have many strikers, but I could see them maybe playing a homegrown up top, maybe Quinn Sullivan or, uh, you know, maybe Paxton Aronson. We haven't seen him, you know, like maybe we could see that happen. Uh, honestly, this Miami match is totally up in the air for me. I think it really will be determined after the union play Orlando. If a lot of players play close to 90 minutes in that heat in Orlando and then they stay in Florida to play Miami, then you probably see some roster rotation. Um, that, uh, you know, maybe not on the back line. That's, that's what Jim doesn't like to do. So that's pretty much it for me. I think, uh, I think it'll really depend on the Orlando match, but I would not be surprised to see uh, a bunch of changes sort of like how Jim rotated the roster when they went to Chicago. Justin, homegrowns on Sunday? Can we possibly see that? Um, I mean, depending on the Orlando match, like Tim said, yeah, I think it's a it's a possibility. I I think of the two Florida games, I think Miami is definitely the more winnable. Um, so I think Jim might decide to experiment a little. I think, as I said, the the, the lineup for the 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 Orlando game would probably be Leon out for Jamiro. I think the inverse is true for the Miami game. And then I think maybe, maybe you move God's dog up as a striker. Maybe you have Jack McGuinn in or Quinn Sullivan, maybe even a Paxton Aronson sighting. He has been on the bench. Um, we don't know. We also do know that uh, according to James Presser, that El Senio will be traveling with the team. So there could be an El Senio sighting, um, which I- I'm sure, uh, if you throw him on for 20 minutes, maybe 20, 25 minutes against Miami, yeah, he'll uh, he'll 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 do what he does and uh, show show the show some of the the the, the young heads how to uh, how to do a, a nice step over too. Um, I think really, if based on the result in Orlando, I think you're gonna have a lot of change. Probably not on the much on the back line. Maybe you rest either Glasnes or Elliot, and you put Finlay in there. Um, I don't know whether you – I don't know if – I don't think Kai or, or Olivier get rested um, just because they at this point they seem to be machines. I mean, you could put in Riel uh, or Harriel, but I, I don't see that kind of rotation. Uh, the rotation is going to come in the midfield and, and up top and – like I said, I think maybe you move Gazdag as a second striker next to to Casper. Uh, maybe bring Sergio on as a sub. Uh, but I definitely think the Miami game was going to lend Jim to a lot of of roster experimentation. Yeah. All righty, all right, guys, it's that time. Let's get to some predictions. And of course, we always let our guests go first here. So, Alex, do we get any sort of positivity in this in his prediction? Uh, no, um, the way Miami's playing, I, I don't, no, no, honestly, I don't see them winning right now. It, yeah, it's a mess. Philly, the Union are a really good side. Um, I've watched them a couple of times when Inter is not playing, so I, I fully expect the Union to, to win this game. Um, no surprises. I don't think Inter will really, um, hurt them at all. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe off a set piece, but yeah, I think the Union, they, they're comfortable. They're going to win this game comfortably. Okay. All right. Do you so, want me to give like a number? Like I'll yeah, say yeah, like yeah. oh three yeah. zero union. Three zero union. Wow. Yeah. 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 All stole right. My so you get, you stole my prediction. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> real quick, real quick, I want to give props to Alex for uh for giving predictions on a game that's happening this weekend while her team is getting <laughs> Scored on again. Yeah, I, I saw it. Yeah. Like, yeah, real real just just real one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's uh, crazy. 
What do you, what do you got this weekend? So what do you see Sunday happening? To be honest, I, I really hadn't looked much at Miami this season, except for the one time where they beat us. So I, I kind of assumed wrongly that they were not, they weren't up in the playoffs, but I assumed that they were kind of almost there and they're, very much not now that I'm looking at, at their stats. No, they're they're battling Cincy for the wooden spoon. Yeah, it's it it's bad. Um, I, and like Alex pointed out, there's all of these major issues that they're having, and Gonzalo Gonzalo Higuain possibly being injured. I mean, he scored five goals, and, and and no one else has really come close to that. Which I mean tells you the whole story there. So yeah, I, I see the Union winning comfortably. If I I had to put a score on it, I, I think it would be two zero just because. Union coming off of a, a what I think will be a tough game in Orlando that they're going to win. I, I still think they're going to win in Orlando, guys. Uh, so yeah, please beat get- Orlando at least. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think the Union win win two uh, zero on a night that will maybe look a little bit different uh, from what we're used to seeing. Zach, what do you got for us? Well, um, I'm also going three zero. Um, and I think that depending on the Orlando matchup, of course, and how the game goes, I think we could even see some formation change and have Jim try out maybe like a little 4-3-3 maybe, you know, stick stick maybe like Sergio at left wing and Paxton at right wing. And then, I don't know, Gazdag is like maybe what? a false nine striker. Dude, I'm just spitballing here. This is what I would do if – That's good. Somebody check this here. man. If I had if I if I had the opportunity and we beat Orlando and we're and we're just like you know what let's let's have some fun and try some things out to see what maybe has to happen in the in the next couple of years if this diamond starts to dwindle a little bit I I mean you might as well try some new formations against a team that's playing as poorly as as Miami is because even even by the off chance that the the changes don't work and you got and you're like drawn with them at halftime and it's a close match, you just switch back, right? You just switch back, and then you and then you just go win the game in the second half. So I, I really hope that that's the case, that Jim tries out some new for, uh, like a new formation against uh, Miami because I think it's definitely the game to do so, uh, unless, you know, since he comes along again or maybe Chicago, but um, then, then we can talk about that then too. Zach, honestly, you brought up something that I've always thought about. I've always envisioned, like, what do you look like in a 4-3-3? Dude, I would love it. I would love it. Maybe he'll see you on the right. He'll just come yes. in. Oh, it would be fantastic. Just doing elasticos through people's legs on the right side. Come on. <laughs> Zach got us all fired up. Justin, what do you got, man? Um, you know, I I wasn't sure uh be- be- before before the Miami game uh what the what the scoreline was gonna be. And then I saw them just start to get rail railroaded hard by, I mean, listen, by a squad in new England that does not put up a lot of goals. Yeah. Um, so that says something. Uh, I think, I think they do at least score a goal. Uh, I think it's a three to one game. Um, I am going to go with uh, to, to top uh, Tim's initial prediction with the Orlando game, I think Gaza gets a brace. Oh, as the I, second forgot to say that. I forgot to say that one of the goals from the Union in this match will be Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Potentially be his first. It could be his first. Sorry, Justin. I think I think I go balls. I think it's a it's a brace, and then you get a a a substitution goal from Paxton Aronson. Oh, I'm not even even ballsier here. Uh, from an assist from El Cid, man. Wow. Okay. Cid, I think. wow. And I forgot to mention that if El Brujo does not get a red card against Orlando, he will get a red card against Miami. <laughs> 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 you're, you're you're just gonna keep guessing. He's gonna Tim and I are on the same card. wave, just on two opposite sides. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Alex, listen. It, we really want to thank you for coming on. We know it's a rough night with in Miami Nation, uh, but seriously, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find you, your work, the podcast? Let us know where we can find everything for you. Right. So um, you can find me on Twitter at AAW underscore 1998 and at the Heron Outlet on Twitter as well, at the Heron Outlet. 
Uh, yeah, I cover in Miami for Lemon City Live, Fan Side, and World Football Index. I also want to give a shout out to Alejandro Badoya. He's he's a South Florida native. He was uh, born in New Jersey, but he was raised down here. So yeah, I'm a big fan, and I want to give him a shout out. But yeah, that's where you can find me on Twitter awesome. at the Heron Outlet and at AAW uh, 1998. Alex, that was love. I yeah, love. I love that. I love that. Um, yeah. And also, too, guys, not only Alex, but Freddie, who we had on earlier, we will put all the, those handles in the in the descriptions and on wherever you stream podcasts will be on the, the descriptions as well. So you guys can go find their work. Anytime you're like curious, you know, what what's Miami up to? Did they fire Neville? <laughs> well, you can go check out Alex's work ran, quite Probably. randomly there. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so, Alex, seriously, thank you so much for tuning uh, for coming on in here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning on in. This is another episode of Do By The River. Do not forget to like the live and subscribe to wherever uh, – I'm sorry, subscribe to the Ed Barcelona Philly YouTube channel. This is where we put all the live portions of the podcast. And, of course, you can stream us wherever you stream podcasts as well from a- Apple, Google, and Spotify. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Alex Finley. That is Justin, uh, Chief Balding Officer Friedberg. We got <laughs> Zachary Lavasso, And, of course, we got Tim Lomagoo. I go by the name of El Parcero Philly. We're telling you guys to dupe on, and we'll talk to you guys next week.